Rediscover God's healing power for your life. Rabbi Jason Sobel uncovers the signs and secrets of the miracles of Jesus and what they mean for us today. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, it's no secret that the world is in chaos right now. Wars, protests, and many other things are wreaking havoc in people's lives. But what if the right answer to those calamities is a divine miracle? The miracle of healing over sickness, abundance over scarcity, and love over hate. Taking a fresh look at Jesus' miracles, our guest today is helping us discover the signs and secrets they hold. First joining me on the table is Kendra Kelly Ding. How are you? Doing good. I mean, it all has to mean something. Yeah. God is the master planner. So it all has to mean something. Yeah, Dorothy Newton, yes, little yes, hidden yes. treasures in the Word of oh God. Oh my goodness, there's nothing like truth transformation. Yeah. You know, and only God can do it. So yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, Rachel Lamb Brown, my God daughter. is a miracle working God. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so yeah. I love that we're looking at some of the miracles that he performed and mm -hmm. understanding what those mean and yeah. the secret things hidden in the for Word sure. of God, for sure. what You're... it means for us today. Yeah, the Haviland Ford. <laughs> I'm really excited about this next guest. You know, he's one of the top Hebrew scholars in our nation, yeah. but yet he's able to take the Bible and make it plain for just everyday believers. Yeah. So I'm excited what he's going to share today. Those little hidden secrets. Those that are little kind of in hidden there. secrets. Yeah. And God wants to reveal it to us. He doesn't he does. want to keep it a mystery. He wants us to know it's the good. secrets in his yes. words. That's so good. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I was thinking about, as everybody was talking, an old song. I know who holds tomorrow, mm. so I know he holds my hand. So I believe in the midst of chaos, if we can continually hold on to the miracle working yeah. God, we can have some peace yeah. in the midst of it mm -hmm. all. Yeah. Well, he's the Messianic rabbi, best-selling author who is known for giving a multi-dimensional perspective of the mysteries of Scripture. He's here to give us a fresh look at Jesus' miracles. Please welcome our dear friend, Rabbi Jason Sobel. Hello. Hi. Hello there. Hello. We're going to unlock the ancient mysteries today at the table. All right, I'm looking forward to that. Well, some believe that the miracles performed in the Bible were only for those times. However, that contradicts what Scripture says elsewhere in God's Word. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, if you need a miracle in your life, I want you to know that Jesus is still performing miracles today. You've tried everything else. Why not give Jesus a try today? Yeah. Why not invite him into your heart? Why not just give him that invitation to say, you know what, I've tried everything else. I'm going to try you and just call out on his name. Yes. You're going to be amazed at how your life will dramatically change and God will open supernatural doors. Rabbi Jason is here to talk more about that from his recent book, Signs and Secrets of the Messiah. Why'd you write this book? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So great to be with all of you. You know, I think we live in a world where there is so much chaos, where there is so much hopelessness. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the situation from a natural perspective, it literally seems like there's no hope. But when you understand that God is the God of the supernatural, yes. it changes everything. It doesn't matter what your situation or circumstances are. Yes. God is bigger than all those. And we want people to see the Bible in high definition. We love getting into the details because if there's something there in the word, it's there for a reason. Right. But the spiritual application of that when you see God in every detail, you understand there's such great intentionality mm -hmm. behind everything God does. Yeah. And part of having hope is knowing God is in the details. Mm -hmm. And if he's in the detail of the word and in every word, then he's in every detail of your life mm -hmm. as well. So how did you, just give us a quick version, if you will, of how you came to know Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Yeshua. God is a good sense of humor. <laughs> I grew up in a Jewish family. I was working 
as a uh, hip hop DJ in the recording industry. I was working in a large recording studio in New York City, looked at the lives of all these famous people, said to myself, there has to be more to life than just this. They had fame and fortune, everything I thought I wanted, but there was still something so missing. Mm -hmm. Began a spiritual journey, started studying with my rabbi, started studying Eastern philosophy and religion because I wanted a real encounter and experience with God. In the midst of that, one day I was meditating. My soul left my body. I went into heaven. I saw this king on this throne, high and lifted up, felt the power of God pulsate through every cell in my body. I knew nothing about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I knew that was him seated on that throne. Mm -hmm. He told me I was called to serve him. The next thing I know is down in my body, shaking under the power of heaven. And that made me realize that he was real and made me want to learn who he was. You know, God just had to do the whole (laughs) big shebang with you to get you into the kingdom of God. But you know what? What stands out to me in that is, and for people watching, is that with a sincere Mm -hmm. heart, Mm -hmm. you were searching for truth. There are people watching right now that you've tried everything and you have fame and fortune and yet you have an empty spot on the inside of you and some of you have fallen into deep depression and God's wanting to set you free from that today. What would you say right before we get into the book, just look in the camera and minister to those people that are watching. Yeah, I just want to encourage you today that God is the God of hope. Hope is the belief that your future is going to be better than your past. God has something better for you than you can ever ask, expect, or imagine. And when you turn to Jesus, when you turn to him as your Lord and Savior, when you ask him to come into your situations and circumstances, when you give him the broken things of your life, he'll take the broken things and he'll make something whole out of them Mm -hmm. and he'll make you whole. And that is his promise in the salvation that he offers each and every one of us. You know, um, let's talk about some of this mysteries in the Word of God. You start with the wedding at Cana. So so break that down for us. Yeah, absolutely. I love the fact that Jesus does his first miracle at a wedding. Super significant. I always thought that was so confusing. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I just thought, you know, out of all, because I mean, it was like Mary... You know, she kind of made the decision. Yeah. Like, he really wasn't going to do that. And then she's like, son, come over here. Yes. <laughs> they need you. And he was like, okay. And he honored her. and went. You know, so it was kind of, to me, yeah. it was always kind of like a weird first miracle. But you're saying it really wasn't. No, it wasn't. I mean, first of all, why at a wedding? Because it's a sneak preview of a coming mm. attraction. Mm. It's a sneak preview of the fact it begins with a wedding and it's gonna end with the wedding, with yeah. us celebrating the marriage supper of the lamb yeah. with him. Yeah. He does the miracle on the third day. I'm really looking forward to that day. Right? Are y'all looking forward <laughs> yes. to the marriage supper? Yes. Does that yes. mean there's gonna be food there? Okay, there on. is, yes. we're gonna feast, it's gonna be a, For a, long time. a, a, a good time. Yeah. You know, he, one of the interesting things too is he does this miracle with six stone pots. Why not seven, the number of completion? Why not eight, the number of new beginnings? Why six? But it's so amazing how God is in the details when you understand man was created on the sixth day. We fell in Jewish thought on the sixth day. Mm -hmm. We lost six things as a result of the fall. When Jesus dies, he dies on Good Friday, which on the biblical calendar is the sixth day of the week. So on the same day we fell, the same day Jesus died on the cross, he does the miracle with six stone pots. Why? Because why does he die on the cross? because we took something from the tree in the garden that we couldn't fix. God puts back on the tree for Mm. you and me to undo the sin of the first man and woman. Mm -hmm. And he has a crown of thorns on his head because what's the sign of the curse of creation? The ground will produce thorns and thistles. He's literally taking the curse of creation on his head to break it and restore the blessing. So the six stone pots is symbolic of the fruitfulness and abundance and blessing of the life that we have in him, which ties one level deeper. Why is it the first miracle that he does? Well, the book of John, like Matthew, is trying to show him as the greater than Moses. What's the first miracle Moses did? Water into blood. Blood. But Jesus turns the water into wine because he doesn't come to bring death. He comes to bring life Mm. that we might have it more abundantly. He's the greater than Moses that brings abundant life and salvation for us. Of course, Moses would... The water would come from the rock, but then he would be punished because Mm -hmm. Jesus would never be struck again. And it was symbolic of 
of that that he yeah. told him to speak, right? So there's a lot of symbolism yeah, in the Bible Yeah, like yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. When you think about Moses striking the rock, God says, speak to the rock. He lacked faith. He struck the rock. Mm-hmm. We but actually, the water still came forth. But the water still, because yeah. that's God's graciousness. Yeah, yeah. But what's interesting, as we talk about in the book, you know, some of, one of Jesus' miracles he does on the Feast of Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, celebrates in part God's water for the children of Israel in desert. But the interesting thing about the water, the water came forth from the rock. The rabbi and apostle Paul tells us in Corinthians that the rock that followed him in the desert was Messiah. Mm-hmm. He was the rock. So in a sense, when the rock was struck by Moses, in a sense, he was striking Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a story in the book you talk about, so many great stories in here, but you talk about a time in your life where there was lack and you really needed a miracle. Uh, one Absolutely. of the things I want to say about is when you're going through something, what, a season or a storm, you don't understand. So many times in that, God is trying to teach us a lesson. Yeah. And he will take that and sometimes do some great things out of it. He did that for you. Tell us that story. Yeah, we talk about it in Chapter 7 of Signs and Secrets of the Messiah, the, the, the sign and secret of multiplication when Jesus tests the disciples, when he had to feed the multitude. The interesting thing as we jump into this, the word for test in Hebrew is nisayon, and it comes from the word to lift up or to raise up. So every test is not meant to break us down. It's ultimately meant to lift us up and promote us when we pass it. But I went through that season in my life. I moved out to California, thought I had my dream ministry position, Mm -hmm. Uh, Someone gave a multi-million dollar gift to some friends of mine, and they asked me to come out and start this uh, educational institute. Make a long story short. You had your plan also. I had my plan. (laughs) Lost the ministry position. God said, actually, you know, Bill Johnson prayed over me, said you're going to go through a season of Joseph. I had no idea what that meant at the time. I didn't know it meant the stripping the pits in the prison oh, before God was going to do what he was going to do, right? Exactly. So in the midst of the stripping process, no job, no finances, no ministry, and I get this opportunity. Lou Engel invites me to come out and speak at the call, and I just felt God was going to do something, and I needed to document it I had no money, but I, I, I invested $5,000 to bring a film crew to film, you know, what it is that we were doing. We did the event. We're at the event. I share this message on uniting Ruth and Boaz, Jew and Gentile. When I'm done speaking, this gentleman, unplanned, takes a microphone and says, I used to be a terrorist. I came to this country to, to hurt people, but I encountered Jesus. I'm from Lebanon. I hated the Jewish people. I realized I was wrong. He gets down on one knee, asks for my forgiveness. I get down on one knee. We declare the reconciliation of Isaac and Ishmael coming back Mm -hmm. together. The Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit falls on the place. People are crying. It's an amazing moment. The next day, a young lady comes up to me. She says, I'm also from Lebanon. Israeli soldiers killed my grandparents in the war with Lebanon. I hated Jews. I hated Israelis. I was so moved by what happened last night. I realized that I was wrong. Would you pray for me to love Israel and the Jewish people? Okay, but I still have a problem. I don't know how I'm paying the credit card bill that I put the $5,000 It's all very annoying and you pay for it. You don't know how you're going to pay for it, yeah. And then as I'm leaving, this young lady comes up to me and says, God put it on my heart to give you this check, and it was for $5,000. Wow. Then she gave me a diamond ring and five gold coins. Wow. And it was symbolic of God's promises Mm -hmm. that when he calls, Mm -hmm. he is faithful to fulfill. But we have to be willing to give him the loaves and the fish. Yeah. And he can do a lot with our little but we have to have the faith to give it to him. Mm. You know, I want to say that we, God loves all people. <laughs> he loves the Jew. He loves the Gentile. He loves the Muslims. He loves the Hindu. He, lo- he loves all people. You know, and when some people will say to me, well, so are you saying, um, are you saying that Jesus is the only way? And I was like, well, that's what Scripture says. It's not what I say. It's yeah, what the Word exactly. of God says. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father except yeah, by me. That's how you get to heaven, through Jesus. And, um, and they'll say, oh, so you're saying all these other people groups 
are going to go to hell. And I would say, absolutely not, because God looks on the heart Mm -hmm. and I trust God enough to be able to reveal himself to every person in the world. And he's doing that, isn't he? Absolutely. And we think we have a chapter in the book on the sign and secret of the new birth. Oftentimes, we don't think of that as one of Jesus' miracles. But probably the greatest miracle is the fact that we become born again and become this new creation in him. And, you know, one of the things about that is he says that flesh gives birth to flesh, spirit gives birth to spirit. Unless a person is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Because think about it. When God makes the world, he creates heaven and earth. That means there is a physical dimension to our reality and there is a spiritual dimension to our reality. You have to have physical life to live in this world in the same way you have to have a spiritual birth in order to have a life in God's kingdom. And that's that's what it's all about. Yeah. 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 Kendra? Yeah, I just want to bring up, because we're talking about, you know, God will reveal himself and he will reveal his truth. And we know that since they've been doing the ground invasions in Israel there in the Gaza Strip, that Palestinian people are actually seeing Jesus in visions and in dreams. Why do you think that's happening? And how do you think that this can change things? Absolutely. I think we have this promise in scripture that God is near the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. But I think it's God's grace and mercy in the midst of the pain, he's showing up in supernatural ways. And really, that's how many Muslims and many Jewish people like myself, that's what it takes to bring us to faith because it's so countercultural to what we've been raised with. You know, as you were saying that, I just thought, I just heard the Lord say, um, there are some of you watching, you're asking yourself, is there any truth in what these people are talking about today? And you're actually go- going to have a dream or vision and Jesus is going to reveal himself to you. And when that happens, I want you to to receive and know that God has an incredible plan for your life and, and you're not walking in all that he's created you to do. And I want you just to be open yes. to allowing yes. the Lord to speak to you because he's going to. Yes. Okay. Dorothy. You know, so oftentimes I'm asked to pray. You know, people, will you pray? Will you pray? And I ask them, well, are you praying? Do you have faith? Do you believe? They say, well, no, you're the Christian. I'm asking you to pray. How important, how important is faith? Um, you know, and belief. In, in, yeah, and belief in miracles. Absolutely. I mean, we know from the scriptures, it tells us very clearly in the gospels that Jesus didn't do miracles in some places because there wasn't faith. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, we talk about this in, in Signs and Secrets. We talk about the healing of the noble man's son. And he comes from uh, Capernaum to Cana, Uh, I need a a miracle for my child. Jesus heals the man's child at a distance at the exact Mm -hmm. hour that he says he's going to do it. It's connected to seventh hour. It's connected to wholeness. But he just speaks the word and it happens. What's interesting about that miracle, what it's teaching us, is it goes back to creation. God spoke the world into being and Jesus just spoke the world. He's not limited by time or space. But this is the key. There's two levels of faith. See, most people, and we talk about in the book, most people only have I faith, right? The idea of seeing is believing. If I can see it, if it makes sense to me, then I will believe it. But true faith, deeper faith, is in Hebrew, pay faith. Pay means mouth. Think about creation for a moment. In the very beginning, there was darkness, there was chaos. God spoke, he said, let there be light. And then it says, God saw the light, that it was good. God spoke it before he saw it. True faith speaks it, even when it seems impossible, Mm. even when we can't see how it comes to pass. But the deeper level of faith is mouth faith that calls for things that are not as if they were. And God honors that level of faith. That's creation faith. (laughs) Why do you think that we're living in a John 21 moment? Yeah, I, I believe... We're living in this John 21 moment. The disciples are fishing all night. They catch nothing. I think part of the reason why I say that is I believe that we are 
coming to a time when the greatest catch the world has ever seen is going to come. Yes. There is, we're, we're seeing mm -hmm. little rumblings of revival, little rumblings of the move of God. Mm -hmm. but, I, but before the Lord returns, we know scripture is very clear. There is going to be a great move of God. And I think that is what he is preparing us for. That is what he is setting things up for. I think the fact that there's, that he's separating light from darkness, yeah. he's separating yes. good for evil, in part to make people choose, to make it so obvious, to make Good. it so clear, you can't sit on the fence anymore. But with that too, I believe what the nets represent is the network of kingdom relationships God is bringing together at mm -hmm. this time and season because he doesn't bring the catch until the container comes mm -hmm. to contain what it is. In the past, revivals have broken. They've lasted a short time because everyone wanted to claim that revival is of me or my right. ministry or it's about right. me. But what, Jesus, but what John 21 tells us, no, you just have a piece of the net. You have to join your piece in yes. relationship to other pieces. And when we join together in unity, in relationship, giving all the credit to God, then the nets of revival won't break. You know, one of the things you said earlier is that um, going into 2024, there are open doors that mm -hmm. we have behind us that need to be closed in order for God to do what he wants to do in 2024. Mm. What, what are some of those open doors that need to be mm. closed? Wow. Yeah, I think, I think unhealthy relationships are a big door that needs to be closed. You know, there are people that we're in relationship with that are not a good influence in our lives. They are negative. They are diminishing our faith, okay? I think they're- Unforgiveness, you un mentioned. Un unforgiveness is another door. Again, we talk about it in the book, that unforgiveness is one of the greatest obstacles to people finding healing and wholeness in their life. And, and some of them are just sick in their, in their body. They don't even realize that it is connected to someone or something they haven't forgiven. Wow. Absolutely. I think there's unhealthy emotions that we hold on to that God wants us to let go. I think part of it is... Uh, broken dreams or broken promises that we've experienced in our life. And God is asking that we give him all those broken things and he can bring something good out of them so if we good. give it to him. That's good to have on. I love your testimony, mm -hmm. um, but that you have this supernatural encounter where you are taken before the throne, but then you have this supernatural encounter of unity mm -hmm. through diversity with yeah. this Lebanese man. How? What would you say to people, especially with this whole division right now, how can we really unify with our Jewish brothers and sisters yeah. or our, you know, on the other side of the fence and really contend for the unity of the faith mm -hmm. in such a divided time? I think that's a great question. Going back to John 21, I think part of these nets that don't break, this network of relationships, at the core of it, Jew and Gentile need to be united yes. in Messiah. When Jew and Gentile unite, we become an unstoppable force in Messiah for global change and transformation in the world. That's why the enemy wants to divide us, why he wants to separate the church from the Jewish roots of the faith, which is so key. But I think another thing about this, we talk about the catch doesn't come until they throw the nets on the right side versus the left. The left is the side of severity. It's a side of judgmentalism. It's a side of fire. The right is a side of love and unity. That has to be our perspective. And a verse that God has really impacted me in the midst of everything that's going on is Matthew chapter five, where Jesus says, we need to pray for those who persecute us, mm -hmm. okay? You said, you've heard it say, you will, you will love- Do good to them that despitefully use you. You. Yeah. you know, you've heard it say to you, love, you know, love, love your neighbor, but hate your enemy. Mm -hmm. And Jesus comes us, calls us to come in the opposite spirit. He does. We have to pray for those who persecute us. We have to bless those mm -hmm. who persecute us. And if we only love those who love us right. and only want to be in relationship yeah. with those who agree with us, then we've missed everything. Mm -hmm. And I feel we've made a big mistake sometimes as believers, which is you can stand for the truth, but you can stand from it from the place of fire and judgmentalism mm -hmm. instead of or speaking even a the truth spirit. in love. Or even a religious yeah. spirit. Which is the worst. The religious spirit yeah. is the worst. Yes. And that's what, you know, so we, I was talking with my husband and we were talking about the whole 
religious spirit. He said, that's the only spirit Jesus never cast out. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he cast out all these other, the demon spirits and, you know, the dumb, the deaf, whatever, but he would heal, but he never the religious spirit. And he, he said to me, you know, why don't you? And I said, why? And he said, because it's a heart issue. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so you have to, that heart has to be softened and open in order for God to do what he needs to do. Cindy? Well, I just, I think what you're saying is helping us as Christians be ready for this end time revival. And is what little nugget of advice with everything we're seeing going on in our nation, the chaos, the unrest, things that are erupting, we would have never, it's like a sleeping giant just came alive. Mm -hmm. What would you say to us as the body of Christ that we can somehow mm -hmm. bring that healing, bring that message? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so interesting. We are living in a time where there is a ton of chaos in our world. And what's interesting, that's part of the reason I believe that Jesus does the blessing, the first miracle, the water into wine, because God began creation with water, taking control of the water that represented chaos. And he did it by the word of God and the spirit of God. So just like the word of God and the spirit of God brought order out of chaos, we need to be in God's word. We need to be full of God's spirit. And I believe that is key in this time and in this season. But I also believe it's really learning to love and listen to people unconditionally to meet them where they're at and be willing to engage with people that don't agree with us, that have difference of opinion, and understand God is more concerned with the salvation mm. of that person that he is about you being right there you go. and then, the truth you're trying to share with right. them, right? It's not about being right. It's about being righteous. Right. And, you know, and following the Lord, you know, and following the Holy Spirit. That's so important. But in allowing the Holy Spirit. Yes to do what he can do in that person's mm -hmm. life. They're not gonna be straight up, you know, perfect. I mean, people who come from the world are not gonna, oh, you know, they maybe not line up, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't, you know, that's legalism. You let the right, Holy Spirit right. do that work and he does it so beautifully and, yeah. yes. and that person comes into the kingdom yes. for such a time as this. Well, we are out of time. I want you to remember that we serve a miracle working God. He still heals. He still sets captives free. So no matter what you're facing, God can touch you right now and transform your situation. It starts with praying that prayer. Jesus, come into my heart today. Forgive me. I believe you died on the cross for me. I realize that you are the way to heaven and I want to make sure that I'm ready to meet you one day when I die. Thank you for coming to my heart. Thank you for forgiving me. Jesus' name, amen. Or you can just say, God, I need you. I mean, I've heard people just say, God, I need you. And it's just that simple. He'll meet you wherever you are today. So if you're watching today, you need a healing touch from the Lord, or maybe you prayed that prayer, I'd love to send you a free book entitled, Now What? Uh, call that toll-free number on the screen. Call it and tell our prayer partners, I prayed that prayer. Uh, or say, you know what? I need someone to pray with me. You don't have to give us your name, address. That prayer line is just for you, and that's why we do what we do. I want to thank Rabbi Jason for joining us today. Be sure to pick up a copy of his book, Signs and Secrets of the Messiah. It's available now, and for more, you can visit him online at fusionglobal.org. You'd be very interested to read all of the little hidden mysteries that he shares from the Word of God. And if today's Table Talk ministered to you, let us know. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Jason. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.